Now, we've all had our moments when we want to fling the controller at the TV because there's a boss that's given us a run for our money. In this case, I've picked out five of the toughest bosses in the Resident Evil franchise, in my opinion. The first time hearing Skagdez's voice sent chills down my spine. I didn't even want to open the door, but then I did, and it turns out to be a repetitive mess of a boss fight. You fight him in a good size area, can't really complain with that. And around this area you'll find gas canisters that when he gets in proximity of them, you shoot them to stun him for extra damage. Great, sounds simple enough. However, it's not because he's literally an OP bullet sponge that can insta-kill you with his saw arm. And on top of that, you have infinite spawning enemies on your ass. I call this a dead end fight because I wasn't dying. I was just running out of canisters and ammo to kill them with. Yes, even with headshots. Apart from the annoying repeated lines. Mayday, mayday. Skag dead wasn't that tough, but narrowing down all the Resident Evil bosses, he had fifth position for having antiquated gameplay. Us men saddle as you wish. Now, you may be scratching your head like, what the hell is she on? Sadler's one of the easiest bosses in Resident Evil. You are correct. However, I'm talking about Ada's side story in Resident Evil 4, separate ways. Just before he goes after Leon in the final boss fight, he fights Ada, in which he makes Leon's fight look like a cakewalk. Though you could argue that Ada weakened him in her fight, this fight is hard because just before this, you fight Krauser, who eats all of your bullets. Very weird design for an RE game. You fight him in a small area, and if you miss a quick time, and I mean quick, he'll grab you and slam your head into the ground, resulting in an instant death. I died several times on this fight, and every few times I needed a breather. After dying a thousand times, I looked up a video on YouTube and found a couple of ways to cheese him. The first was a quick kill with the knife. Weird, I know. Which didn't work for me because quick times didn't trigger at close distance. The second was... It's probably better to show you. Vertigo. The Vertigo and Sadler were a really difficult choice for third and fourth place because you can literally cheese them both. See that free rocket launcher in the castle? Yeah, enough said. However, if you want to sell your bazooka for money or save it for a different occasion, beating this guy isn't as easy as you think, especially if you're playing through the game for the first time. You don't even need to kill him to be honest, you can just run around and dodge him until the four minutes is up. But then you miss a part of the crown jewel that he drops, which together is worth like 50k, I think. When I tell you I used every nitrogen tank and magnum bullet I had, he still couldn't die. I even upgraded the magnum firepower as much as possible, but after I ran out of tanks and the good ammo, he literally becomes a bullet sponge. I wasn't about to use the door for five hours to kill him. The crown ain't that special. Jack Krauser. <laughs> Spoiler alert, Leon does not kill Krauser. He comes back to annoy you further in Ada's campaign. The area is laughably claustrophobic, as you have crowds tumbling like his rent is due, and quick time events galore. He covers his upper half most of the time, so you have to shoot his legs and stun him to get another quick shot in. The first time I attempted this, the quick times really irritated me because they were so fast. However, the more I played it, the more I got used to it. This was after several breaks from the game. Don't forget to take regular breaks. Oh my god, this had to take first place. This is the most frustrating boss in the Resident Evil franchise. I seriously can't imagine how people fought him on a 3DS with that 2D analog stick. Right, so you're in this throne room and Chris Redfield is your partner. Only they made him about as useful as Sheva. This boss has two stages to the fight. The first part is pretty easy. The second, not so much. He costs multiple illusions of himself, but the real him has two weak spots that you have to shoot. One on his front and one on his back. 
The problem is his illusions spawn way too close and you have three, maybe four seconds to find and hit the weak spot before he claws you with his talents. You may be thinking, okay, that sounds doable. However, you have to be so precise with your shots, even if you're using a shotgun that's meant to have spread or take massive damage. Upon dying multiple times to this boss, I have a few tips for you if you're currently playing or going to. Have at least four herbs for the end. If you don't, there should be one or two in the boss room. You can use the scanny thingy on him two or three times to get some extra herbs. And lastly, pay attention to the purple smoke coming out of his mouth. He's the real one. I've played this game two or three times now, or maybe four times, I don't know. And every time I've disliked it because of Skag Dead and the Ultimate Abyss boss at the end, out of all the Resident Evil games, I'm probably never going to touch this one again. So is this not what you would have gone for? Tell me the hardest bosses you've encountered in Resident Evil. I guess I'm going to end it here and I'll see you in the next one.